What's going on guys, it's Yuval here and in today's video I want to talk about three major color grading mistakes that beginners always make and I'm also going to show you how to fix them. But before we jump in, I just want to let you guys know that we have a giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But now let's jump in. So the first mistake I see a lot of people make is that they don't prep their footage correctly. And what I mean by that is mainly two things. First one is not balancing the image correctly. And the second one is not doing the right color space conversion for your footage or doing it the wrong way. So I'm going to show you the right way to do these two things and also what you should avoid. So we have here a log footage, which is um, probably what most of you will be working with most of the time. And a classic beginner mistake would be to just jump right in and start working on this image. You know, maybe try to lift up the gain, bring back the shadows, you know, just try to like stretch the image, uh, maybe make something like that. Then go on, make another node, or start giving it um, some kind of a look and so on. And, you know, just basically jumping right in without doing any prep work. And that is not the right way to go because you're setting yourself up for failure, essentially, because you didn't balance the image correctly before you actually started grading. Um, so before we go in and create a look, you have to make sure that our image is um, balanced in terms of the white balance and tint and then also converted um, to Rec. 709 in a clean conversion and that way you have a good starting point so you can go on and create whatever look you're trying to create but you have to get a base start so I'm going to show you how to do it the right way I'm going to delete this node and we're going to start from the beginning and uh, by the way for this footage I kind of mess with the colors a little bit just to get the white balance off so I can show you how to correct it. Um, but let's assume that this is how the footage uh, was actually shot. So for this first node, I'm going to call it white balance and then I'm going to create a new node. And this one is where I'm going to do my conversion to Rec. 709. And to make a good Rec. 709 conversion, you have to know the camera uh, that was used to capture the footage. So in this instance, I know that this was shot on red. So um, there's two ways to do this conversion. One is using a uh, technical conversion LUT that you can find over here um, in DaVinci for free. You can see we have this LUT from red and that's one way to do it, but I'm gonna do it with the color kind of space transform, which I feel usually works uh, better for me. So I'm going to grab that onto there and then I'm going to, for the input color space, I know this was shot on red, so I'm going to go um, for red video gamut RGB. And in the input gamma, I'm gonna go for red log 3G10, then go for Rec. 709. And then in the tone mapping, I usually like to go for luminance mapping. And this is looking very off, and that's because the image is not balanced. Um, so let's just quickly call this Rec. 709. And then on the first node, I'm going to go with my tint, bring it back. That's already looking much better. Now the image is still very warm, so let's cool it off. And that's looking pretty balanced. You can see the image is now clean. It just looks right, and we have a great starting point to go on and create whatever look we want uh, from now on. But you have to make that first um, conversion, that balance, just to get the image um, into that baseline, the base point where you can walk off. And here's another quick tip for the white balance. Maybe if you can't really get it right, um, try to go with this um, eyedropper tool here and it's going to auto balance. And what you need to do is choose a point in the image that should be white. So I'm going to go um, for these uh, things here. And there you go, one click and you have a great white balanced image. So now let's move on to the second a mistake that I see a lot of beginners make and that is not really giving enough attention to the skin. If your skin is not looking right, then the whole look just throws you off. It looks amateurish, it looks bad. So let's look at a quick example of what I mean. Um, so let's say you've done your conversion and white balance um, correctly and then you go on um, you create a new node and um, you want to start applying a look to the image. So let's quickly do that. Um, let's say we want to go for uh, maybe something like that. So 
So let's just say that that's the look I was trying to create here. Um, so it looks nice, but it looks uh, pretty amateurish. And that's mainly um, because the skin is looking bad. It's not the right tone. So now I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, so what we can do is go up to our um, vector scope over here. And you can see we have this skin tone um, line indicator. And if you can't see that, then you have to go into here and then enable show skin tone indicator. And this line basically indicates where the skin tone should be. Now that's not a, you know, must follow 100% of the time kind of thing, but most of the time, um, probably you should follow this line. Um, usually it will get you good results. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. And we're going to create a new parallel node. So I just want this correction for the skin to be on a separate node. So I can control it, I can turn it on and off and see what I've done, and I can later on um, tweak it. So I don't want to do it on the same node as I did um, the look adjustment. So that's also a mistake to avoid um, trying to do all your corrections in one node. And also doing too many nodes is also not the best. Try to think about what you might want to change later, what you might need more control with. So that's an example here with the skin tone. I definitely want to do it on a separate node. So there's two ways to go about this. The first one can be just qualifying and keying out the skin. And the second, um, which might not always work, but it can work in some cases, is using the um, U versus curves here. So I'm going to go uh, with that first. Let's try it out. Uh, we have U versus U. And um, now I'm going to just click on a point here on our skin. And you can see it created a point for us on the curve. And that means this is where the skin tone lies. So let's um, start moving that around and see um, what we get. So you can see as I move this around, obviously we can see it with our eyes, but then also when we look at the vector scope, um, we can see this thing moving along the line. And as I get farther from the um, line, we can see it obviously doesn't look very good. So I'm going to try and park it um, on a place that looks good. Maybe something like that. And let's do a quick um, before and after. So you can see how that looks way better and it really helps sell the look. Um, it now looks more natural and it doesn't look as bad as it did before. And um, this method with the U versus U is sometimes nice because it's really um, quick and it's easier. Um, the thing is you have less control over this because if I wanted to add specific colors um, only to the skin, um, I can't really do it with the U versus U because I can only shift around um, that U. I cannot add um, new things. Um, so let's just look at the other way to do this. So I'm going to delete this node and now I'm just going to create a layer mixer node and the shortcut for that would be um, Alt L if you're on Windows and sometimes I do this on a parallel node um, but let's try it with the mixer node and how this layer mixer node um, works without um, getting too deep into this subject on this video but essentially it's just taking information from this node over here so you can see if I turn this off we have the look and I want to affect the skin that's um, like the way it was over here on the Rec. 709 conversion. So that's what happens with the layer node. If you create a parallel node, then it's going to kind of do some kind of a blend, some kind of a mix between these two nodes. So sometimes I do this with the um, parallel node, but for this time I'm going to go with the layer mixer. Um, you can just try this out for yourself and kind of see what you like best. It also depends on the project. Let's move on with this. Um, so now obviously this is just pretty much deleting everything that we did with the look. Um, that's because we have to actually select just the skin so that we only have that. So I'm going to go into the qualifier over here and I'm going to select skin. And then just so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to um, press here on this highlight feature. And now you can see what we're grabbing. Let's denoise it a little bit. Give it some blur. 
and usually I would spend um, obviously more time getting the perfect key um, and you should definitely do that um, but just for the sake of this tutorial let's assume that this is my uh, final clean key so I'm going to take off the highlights you can see that basically we masked out the skin um, from this look node so this is the same skin as we had in the Rec 709 node that we have here so if I turn all of these off turn them back on you can see the look is pretty much only um, done on the background now and now my skin looks better but there's just something weird because it's not blending right because we did a lot of things with the look adjustment but then um, we're just reverting the skin back into the Rex 109 um, which doesn't really blend well so what I usually do is I go to my key and then I just bring down this gain and you can see how that starts to kind of blend things in if it's sitting at zero uh, basically it means um, it's not showing at all um, so let's try to kind of get it right where we want it to be maybe something like that looks kind of nice so let's do a quick before and after this doesn't look good skin looks green and blue just looks off and then we we're bringing the skin back and that's looking way better and now that we have the skin selected we could actually even um, go into the log wheels maybe and you know we could maybe add some reds in there so basically with this technique of separating the skin um, compared to the first way that I showed you, um, we have way more control with this one. So the next big mistake that I see a lot of beginners make, and this is one that I've been uh, making for the longest time when I was just starting out with grading, and this is one of the like bigger ones I would say, and that is not having clean blacks. Um, so what I mean by that is if we look at the um, black areas on the image, on the shadows, you can see they have a very strong tint in this image. They look green, um, kind of like bluish, and they're also very lifted. We can see this by looking at the scopes um, over here on the right side. You can see that the shadows are pretty lifted, and then also the red is quite down, which means we have a lot of um, blues in there. Um, then the blues are kind of down. Um, it's just not looking right. Um, not on the scope and not with our eyes and having clean shadows that sit on the right point um, on the scopes is really critical to having beautiful and clean and professional looking grades so the way to fix that is i'm going to create a parallel node using alt p and then first off like using my log wheels i'm going to go into the shadows and just start bringing things down until it kind of hits that zero point so somewhere around there and then we're going to get rid of that um, green tint and there's a few ways to do this but that's just the easiest way and the one that i find myself using the most and that's by going to our shadows wheel over here and then pushing in the opposite direction of our tint so we have kind of like a greenish uh, bluish tint so i'm going to pull in the opposite direction which is um, red or like magenta I'm just going to look at the image while I play with this to get um, just the right color and the right amount so maybe something like that looks kind of cool so that's before and this is after and you can see how that really really helps the grade look a lot cleaner And then if you think we went too far, we can always um, bring the entire key kind of down. Or we could also um, just um, go back here and like raise the shadows or do whatever. But this is looking way better now. And um, you could have some tint in the shadows, like that's fine. That's something that you can choose to do with your grade. Um, but just the like darkest blacks should usually um, be clean uh, as a general rule of thumb and um, with this adjustment we're affecting a lot of the shadows so if we wanted to only affect the darkest darks of the image then what we could do is go into the 
low range over here and then just kind of control that and you can see if I pull this all the way down to zero then we're not affecting any of the shadows and as I start pulling this up we're affecting more and more of the shadows so if we have this quite low then it's affecting only the darkest parts of the image and as I go up it's affecting more of the shadows so this is an important um, slider over here the slow range feature um, it really helps you control just the exact tones that we want to be affecting so that's looking much better um, if I go like zooming into his gloves even you can see how before this looks kind of dull it's kind of washed out um, the details are kind of gone in a lot of these areas and when I bring this back on um, it just gives it um, a lot more detail it looks much crispier it's not washed out and that's really something that a lot of beginners um, overlook so these are the top color grading mistakes to avoid i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a like and consider subscribing for more videos like this one and for today's giveaway one of you guys could win a free one year outfit subscription all you have to do to enter is tell us down in the comments below what video would you like for us to make next but that's all for today and until the next time Stay creative.